Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And just yesterday, or the day before, I did a video on Gaia, a new procedural uh, graph-based landscape creation system. And a lot of the comments around it were, wow, this looks a lot like World Machine with a better UI. And I hadn't touched World Machine in quite a while, and I'd never actually covered it on this channel, so that is exactly what we are going to do. So if you are fresh off the Gaia video, this is awfully going to look familiar. So I agree 100% those comments are justified. Now, World Machine has been around for quite a while, and it is available over at worldmachine.com. There is a free download option. Just go ahead and click it. You will notice in the brackets there, it says Windows. Yep, this stuff is Windows only software. Sorry to the rest of you folks. Hopefully it will run in some kind of an emulation layer. Again, I haven't tested that. If you do try it in Wine and it works, let me know. Now you'll see here, there is a free version available, but it is limited. You cannot use it commercially like you can with Gaia. So what are the pricing levels like? We're gonna look at that and then we're gonna jump into the downloaded version. The nice thing about the downloaded version is it's a very small download, like under 20 megabytes. So we got different version levels here. We've got Indie, Professional, and Studio Site License. The Indie Profile License is $199, uh, that's one year supported updates, and then it's basically build resolution limited only by system RAM, build with up to two cores, and you can export out to your commercial project. So that export out part is probably the biggest difference between it and the free download version you can try. Uh, professional is 300 bucks, includes unlimited resolutions, up to 256 cores for builds, multi-monitor workstation support, tile trains, and automatic um, automation for script builds. And then the site license obviously is a site license. So if you're using this for a lot of people in your studio, that is the way you want to go. So I've gone ahead and I've downloaded the demo version and let us jump in. Now I'm going to start off first off by saying that this UI is a bit of a mess. And by a bit of a mess, I mean this UI is a mess. There are so many different ways to do the same thing in a very unintuitive manner. So when you first jump in here, it looks terrifying, but don't let it be because it's not actually that bad. It's just that they've they've iconified and tabified and then menuified the exact same thing over and over and over again, and it makes it look much scarier than it is. Because really, all you're doing here is just like you were with Gaia. You're building these flow graphs of nodes. They go together, so you've got basically a generator, which normally is creating you know the base colors of your height map, and then you do things like add rivers and erosions and so on to it, and then you export it. And in a simple nutshell, that is what you're doing. So here you can see left to right of the graph. Now, one of the things they do really well well here though is there are a ton of samples to get you started we'll look at that in a second I mean, you see, here is a simple graph. There's these color boxes to help you out. You can create them or get rid of them or however you want to deal with it. But you'll see you've got a generator, and when you select it, you can see the results of it. And then we've got modifiers on it. So we hit it to a curve, and then we do erosion to it, and you can see the results up here in real time. And then ultimately, what you're going to want to do is export this guy out as a height map for use in your game. Now, a height map is basically a black and white um, displacement map that is used by game engines to draw a landscape. And this guy, just simply double click it. It will bring up the editor, at least in theory. I don't know what's going on there. There it is. And this is where you would output this guy out. So if you want to get this guy out of here, just go over here. Say I want to export this as a PNG file. Uh, file name, sure, that's fine. And then just basically write the output to disk. And it will run the build process. And it is documented as there in output.png. Let me go ahead and look at that file. And there it is. So that is the build process. That is all it takes to create the height map. And this is your ultimate output from this guy. Now, the cool thing is your output can also be an OBJ mesh. Uh, we can just go back over here for a second and I'll show you changing nodes up. So instead of this node here, so we'll get rid of the height output map and I'm gonna show you, here's the output tab. So you can come here and then you can try and figure out from these icons, which one it is you actually want. And it's mesh output what we want, but you can also go up here and go devices. Devices are basically nodes. Uh, devices is a very strange choice of words, but basically each of your nodes is a device. So you're gonna come up here, go devices, and then what we want is outputs and mesh output. So you've got all these different ways of doing the same thing. It's it even more confusing when we get into the um, whole uh, building and navigating your world thing, which I'll show you in a second. But we're here, primary output here, output into there, double click this guy and your menu comes up. And now you can choose how to export this guy out to mesh. And we'll go ahead and write this to disk. It's gonna do a build on it. File will be written. And then boom, there is an OBJ file, 33 or 35 megabytes in size. But that OBJ file contains the geometry of your level. So if you're not using height maps, if you actually wanna bring this into a level editor or a content creation tool like Blender, Max, or Maya, you can at this point in time. So as you see, it's really not that hard. It's just not immediately intuitive. So now let's go and show you a little bit of the power here. So first off, we've got the Perlin 
um, it's the Perlin map that is creating the base map that we're working with. And once again, in every case, you double click it to bring up the editor. So double clicked and editor should be on its way. Things are lagging a bit for me right now. One second. Okay, there you see, there is our generator for that particular device or node. And every single node has its own editor. Some of them are even actually uh, quite in depth. So for example, if we wanted to start running some riverbeds into our world, we can just go ahead and create one. So uh, I could try it. Yeah, I think it's under natural. And then I can hover around until I find river. And then we can, so you select that and then you're in create mode and I'll just drop it right here. So that connected straight in and through. And now what we can do is come in and double select the river. And now you see the tool for river itself is quite intensive. So here we can come in and say, add some reaches to it. And you'll notice in your map what the end result is. So we'll come in here and say, we're, we want our river to run here. Hello. Oh, I got to hold down the left mouse button. All right, so there we just added a river flow and you'll see the immediate change. So it's got all on that line. It just updated. Now let's just do another one here and you will see the update as the map increases. So this is a way of an interactive tool for creating new riverbeds in your world. And as you're seeing, it's that double click menu again, click here to go back to your graph. And that is really all that is involved in creating these things. Now, when you're ready, you just basically come back here and turn this guy into another one of the outputs. So I'll show you over here. Your outputs, uh, you can output a graphic or a render result, or you can do the height map, which is 99% of the time, that's what you're going to be doing. And if you're happy with your world, so you've gone through, you created everything, potentially maybe you wanna add some water to it. You know, let me get rid of that. Let's turn that back into a height map output. That's what we're gonna be doing most of the time. So outputs, height, click, drag our pin in. And you'll notice there are all kinds of different pins based off or connectors based off of what you're connecting in. So we've got mask, masks that we can bring in. Uh, so there's a sediment removal map if you want to have that going in. So there's all kinds of different options here for uh, tweaking and controlling each one from other nodes coming in. And that's just basically just hover over the input. So you'll see if it's on the left or so, it's an input. If it's on the right, it's an output. Uh, so if we're happy with our maps, let's bring this guy over here. We'll look at it right there. Now we want to go ahead and take a look and interact with it. And that's where these guys come in. So this icon right here is where you go to be here to basically create your graph. And then we start getting into the preview graph. So we can lay out here kind of that's that top down view we looked at for the river editing. Here we've got flying mode. So we can actually come in and fly around in our generated world. Um, it's going to take a second to build, but then, and I find the key strokes or key bindings that they've decided to use are very confusing. So it's right mouse button for up and down, left mouse button for orbit, and I don't even remember how to fly. It's not WASD. Uh, is it control? No. Let's just say their, their input binding choices were a little interesting. So in addition, you've got flying mode here. And again, this is another area they could streamline. So we're, here, we're sitting here in the 3D view mode. And then there's also this explorer view mode. So right now we're in explorer view. There is a 3D view. Why don't you combine these two into a single view? And then we get down below. So we'll go back to explorer view. You'll, need, you'll notice you've got all these various different options here for how you can explore your world. So for example, I can jump directly to one particular point in my world. I can fly around the world, I can walk the world, I can drive the world, or I can hover the world. And each time the, the controls are a little bit different. And on top of that, there is never was to key control. So actually I spend most of my time here, if I'm honest. In this case, right mouse button is zoom in and out. Left mouse button is like a table orbit and middle mouse button is a pan. So it's about as straightforward as you get. And then the scroll wheel is a zoom. So you can come in, you can see your world in action here. You want to add some water to it. You can turn show on and then raise and lower the water level. And then from here on in, it is a matter of kind of getting more and more advanced in how you're doing things. Now here, I'm going to loop back and show you, and this is an area where this guy really shines over Gaia is we come over here and we'll see we've got open example worlds and there's a ton of them to get you going. So if you download this guy and you're overwhelmed with it to start with, simply come in here and start with the tutorial. This is very straightforward. It basically is a bunch of text that explains that you've got your create on this side and your view on that side. And that's that. So that's where you start. Oops, I'm creating a pin. Did not mean to do that. And then you kind of just move on and on and on in the complexity of your examples and you will eventually learn it. And they've got some set examples in here, like again, creating a river, um, 
height matching, we've got islands, uh, cartoony trains, coloring your coast, and so on. And then we can get into a slightly more advanced example, such as, uh, let's go to the most advanced, Grand Canyon. And I'll show you how advanced the network node graph here can become. So here you see, this is the creation of the Grand Canyon. You'll see it's, it's documented nicely. So we're creating the outer canyon. And you can, at any point in time, click a thing and see what the end result of that generation is. And then we're going to add some river to the inner canyon. And then we're creating terracing and erosion. So here, that should update. It's thermal weathering. And then we got rock texturing. So it's adding some rock textures to the scene. Uh, we've got some vegetation being added to our world. So it shows you how to go ahead and create all of these things. Uh, add a riverbed in, that riverbed gets outputted to a basic renderer, the color generator to a combiner, and then to the scene view. And then ultimately with the scene view, let us go ahead into 3D view. And this is the end result. And one thing you'll notice is the, the resolution can be a little crap. There is a monitor right here for changing that. And another thing is when you first install, it will set to some defaults that are really low. Come in here into prefaces and jack these guys up and it will look so much better. And I don't find any performance issues after the fact. This is also one of those things I think you get uh, better results if you buy it. Uh, but you can jack up the texture memory and so on. And we'll go ahead. You've also got some options there for multi-memory and it can create a much better looking result. And once again, we can fill the Grand Canyon with water if we so wish. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. Now, one of the things you'll notice is when we're in this, this mode right here, that is kind of the equivalent. So let me just go over here and show you Outer Canyon. Well, there will be over here a folder of Outer Canyon. So you're seeing this guy over here is basically the node tree in a flattened list form of what you're seeing over here. And that in a nutshell is that was World Machine, and I, I, you know what? It does kind of the same-ish thing. It, it's got a much different approach in a way, but um, it's much more stable. It's much better documented. It has less friendly indie developer license. There's no completely usable free version, for example. It's a lot more stable, and it is a lot better documented. But I can honestly see how people would look at Gaia and go, okay, uh, this is a ripoff of World Machine, or this is heavily inspired by World Machine, and I can agree with that. They're both procedural generated uh, world tools. They got quite different workflows and uh, quite different UIs, uh, but I, I can 100% see where people are coming from on that. Uh, and that's where I'll leave it. Obviously, there are two very similar in scope programs. One is definitely older and more mature with different licensing terms. The other one is younger, less documentation and less stable. I can definitely see why you would choose one or I can see why you would choose the other. Um, and I would love to hear your opinion on this one. Between the two, if you watched both videos, what looked better, Gaia or World Machine? Which looked easier, Gaia or World Machine? And better yet, if you've used both, which one did you like better? So anyways, that was World Machine, a very useful program if you want to create train for your world, especially if your particular game engine either has bad train generation tools or doesn't have them at all. Or if you're looking to try and create this for an art application such as Max Maya or Blender, that World OBJ export is definitely useful. So that is World Machine. I'm going to probably put the train generation stuff on hold for a bit, but there are a number of other ones out there to cover as well. If there's another one you want to see me look at, something like TerraGen or any of the other ones that are out there, do let me know that in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.